Room 101, Episode 8 Edward Bryant's Again Dangerous Visions Story The 10 O'Clock Report is brought to you by Originally published in Harlan Ellison's famous Again Dangerous Visions Anthology in 1972, Edward Bryant's cautionary tale, The Ten O'Clock Report is Brought to You By, is set a mere eight years into the future, in 1980. In an effort to corner the network news market, one company decides to create the news in the form of a catastrophic rogue attack on one small town. Not only are they first on the scene, they are there when the attack happens to record every graphic, violent, and sensationalistic detail to serve up on the 10 o'clock report. So how does this story stack up to predicting the future? I know of no confirmed incidents where a news station literally manufactured a crisis simply to be there and be the first to cover it. Although it would not surprise me at all if one of these upstanding companies resorted to doing it in the future. That being said, we are quite aware that in various countries, including the U.S., the media works hand-in-hand with state and federal governments to fabricate the narrative of a story, and the government will throw them a bone at the scene when shit goes down. A few recent examples of this include the raid on one of the journalists working for Project Veritas. James O'Keefe actually received a text message from the New York Times asking about the raid as it was happening. And then while I'm holding the search warrant, which lists these chicken shit charges, absurd, absurd, ridiculous crimes, they would never charge the New York Times with these crimes because it's, it's, it's laughable. I get a text message from the New York Times. And somehow, within minutes of this happening, the New York Times knows what I'm holding in my hand. They know the subject of the secret grand jury subpoena. How the hell do they know that? Of course, the New York Times is talking to, coordinating with, working with the FBI. In January of 2019, CNN just happened to be at Roger Stone's house when the FBI conducted a raid and arrested Stone on charges of making false statements, obstruction, and witness tampering, none of which was true. While CNN did not create the story, they obviously received a tip-off from the government source allowing them to be first on the scene as the raid was being carried out. These are examples of state-run media. A phrase often used by the likes of CNN and the New York Times to describe foreign networks spreading of misinformation. So in a more subtle sense, the idea of networks literally creating the news is not far off. They are certainly guilty of manufacturing consent. Edward Bryant was born in 1945 and held a variety of odd jobs during his life until he started writing. Circa 1971, he sold a whopping 25 short stories to a variety of genre publishers. One of his first sales was to Harlan Ellison's Again Dangerous Visions anthology published in 1972. Ellison's intro to the 10 o'clock report is brought to you by, and Edward Bryant's afterward is almost as good as the story itself and puts a lot of things into perspective. Bryant was living with Ellison at the famous Ellison Wonderland in the Hollywood Hills at the time, so his anecdotes about the fledgling writer are a must-read. Quote, as I sit down to write this introduction to Ed Bryant and his story, he lies sleeping in the blue bedroom with the enormous bird kite hanging from the ceiling in the west wing of my home here in Los Angeles. About half an hour ago, he took home his date, a gorgeous lady named Roz, who had too much cheap wine to drink and got kittenish as hell. It ain't easy to write about Bryant. He has become one of my very closest friends, and all the things I'd like to tell about him, like the morning I'd lost touch with reality and desperately needed to know what day it was, and he told me with grave seriousness that it was National Mackerel Commemorative Day won't mean a thing to you." Unquote. Bryant's comments about the story attach a broader meaning to what he was getting at. Quote, 10 o'clock report is a story about prostitution. 
I was angry when I wrote it, and I became angry each time I read it again. I am angry with the vast majority of good citizens who sell out their souls for their particular messes of pottage, be they money, prestige, emotional titillation, or whatever. I am angry with everyone who submits peacefully to having his mind seduced by the vast scaled rotten things that pervade our society. Further, I am angry with all of you people who don't even attempt to do anything about those aforementioned rotten things. And that includes me. After all, all I did was to write the story. Unquote. Edward Winslow Bryant died in 2017 after a long and brilliant writing career earning him two Nebula Awards. For many years, he was a frequent contributor to magazines and anthologies, and though his fictional output slowed in the 90s, he was still active as a critic. He was a familiar figure at conventions, especially in Colorado fandom. He was a frequent guest at the World Horror Convention and chaired the 2000 Convention in Denver. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Room 101. As always, please like, subscribe, and share. Thank you.